<laughs> Hi friends, this is your old pal Papa Dale with another episode of Christ vs. Culture. Today's topic is a question. Are you struggling with sin? Repeated sin? That's the question. And this is just one of literally hundreds of videos that have been produced and being uploaded now to YouTube, uh, which are based on the meaning and implications of 1 John 2.15. That verse says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so we must prefer Christ over and above his creation, even the things that, that we enjoy. We just the, the emphasis is that we have to prefer Christ and honor him. Now there are two purposes for uploading these videos now. One, to provide a body of content for the Christian community today. Two, to provide a legacy of content for folks who for folks who will be left behind after the rapture. And there will be millions. My hope is the Holy Spirit will direct some of them here and that these these videos will help them. Well, who am I? I'm Papa Dale. And I am a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, evangelist, chaplain, and businessman. And a lot of things in 50 plus years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you should want to know something about anyone who says they want to teach you about the Bible. Because in the end times, scripture says, many false teachers will arise. And you don't want to be listening to false teachers. The most best uh, excellentest way of, of knowing whether a teacher is true or false is compare what they teach to what the Bible says. It's got to be consistent, it's got to be congruent, not just with a cherry-picked verse here or there, but with the whole counsel of the Word of God. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about me, there's a video that I've made, uh, Papa Dale intro, that tells a little bit about my background, and you can find it on this this Bible uh, topic playlist. So, Christ versus culture. Are you struggling with repeated sin? Here we go with the lesson. Are you feeling bad over a repeated sin? Feeling bad over repeated sin is not a sign that you are born again. It's a sign of conviction of sin's existence still in you. That the Holy Spirit hasn't given up on you least not yet. The truly born-again person will seek sanctification. Now that's different than justification. Justification is you are born again, you're saved. Now what happens in your life after that is you seek sanctification. You welcome the process of becoming more like Christ. So the truly born-again will seek sanctification. Not to be saved, but to express gratitude that you are saved. He will not calculate how to skirt sin. How can I get close and enjoy the pleasures of sin, but still be saved? How much can I get away with? Is not the question a born-again person asks. How much can I do to thank Christ? Is the question the born-again person asks. The born-again person, the one with the regenerate heart, the one more concerned with pleasing Christ rather than pleasing the flesh, rather than enjoying the pleasures of sin, this person will observe the pattern of sin in his life and take steps to thwart it, to change it, to defeat it. The one always falling into sexual sin will delete the porn apps on his phone and wipe the memory of them. The thief will not go to the mall alone, but he'll take a fellow believer with him each time that will hold them accountable. The one repeatedly choosing drunkenness over Christ will cease buying and drinking alcohol. The gossip will delete social media from their life. The proud will not seek to lead, but will seek to be a humble follower and put Christ first. 
The serial adulterer will repent of his self-pleasure priority, and he will stop using others as sex objects and begin to see them as a child of God and worthy of respect. Now, unless you manifest these or similar efforts to genuinely work to remove sin from your lifestyle, it's possible that you're not truly born again. You may just be a hanger-on, a wannabe. I don't know. I don't judge anyone's salvation if they confess Christ as their Savior. Only Christ and you know the real truth. However, were I in your shoes, I would be on my face before God to make certain. Quote, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now this is the critical part with regard to this topic. And every man that has this hope, what hope? The hope of salvation, of ultimate salvation. Every man that has this hope in Christ purifies himself purifies himself he works he plans he changes things in his life he gives an effort to restore he gives an effort to remove repeated sinful behaviors he recognizes that he's always falling into this sinful behavior what can I do to eliminate that temptation? So every man that has this hope of salvation in Christ purifies himself. He works, he plans, he changes things in his life to remove repeated sinful behaviors. Even as Christ is pure, he purifies himself even as Christ is pure. 1 John 3, 1 through 3. The flaws of sin are baked into our very nature, and they require that the Christian life be one of continual examination. Don't be deceived, dear children. Don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. We read that again, verse 9. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers, does not belong to God. 1 John 4. I think that's, so. Oh, I've got it wrong in my notes. I think that's 1 John 3, 4 through 10. Let me double check that. Yes, that was 1 John 3, verses 4 through 10. So, that's the, uh, the last comment that I have uh, for this lesson topic. The point of the whole thing is this. You can fall into sin occasionally. You can be walking along in your life trying to live a, a good, pure, clean, sanctified life and, and suddenly you wake up and you realize, oh, I, 
I've been thinking about something sinful. Well, if you think about it, it's the same as doing it in terms of you being guilty of sin. So now you wake up and you realize, oh, wow, man, I've been thinking about that, and that's a sinful act, and so, Lord, please forgive me. But you can't be a hooker for Jesus. You can't willfully go out and commit sin and then afterwards say, oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, Lord. I won't do it anymore. You can't. It doesn't work that way. You can't be a thief for Jesus and go out and say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I have to steal because it's just this compulsion inside me." You can't do that. You can't be a a hitman for the mafia and get saved and then go out and continue to do the same work. You can't do that. There has to be a change in your life. If you've genuinely come to Christ, there has to be a change in your life. That's what the word repentance means. You repent of your sin. That means you turn away from your sin and you turn to Christ. And if you are repeatedly going back to the same sin over and over and over, you have to give an effort to figure out what it is in your life that allows you to be tempted to do that, and if, and if you, uh, if uh, uh, sexual sin is your problem, and let's say you've been the manager of a strip club, uh, you can't be a manager of a strip club anymore. You've got to make a change in your life. And so those are my comments. I guess I can beat this horse, uh, this dead horse, until, until it's, it's even more dead. <laughs> but here's the point. Uh, there's a difference between justification and sanctification. But sanctification identifies whether you really have received justification. And so you do have to pay attention to sanctification. You have to make changes in your life that reflect your gratitude towards Christ for justifying you, for saving you. So, if you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them down below. And uh, I'll answer them if, uh, if they're not just crazy foolishness. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I get questions from people that uh, I can't even read because they're just... Uh, I don't even know if they're in English. But anyway, the point is, if you've got questions or prayer requests or comments, you can leave them below. If you're going to get lengthy about anything, there's a, a hot, there's a link to my Facebook page. You can take it there. If you want to go back through and, and look at this uh, section again, this lesson again, there's a link to do that. And uh, this is your old pal, Papa Dale, saying that... Uh, that uh, if the Lord allows me to live and allow and and the rapture doesn't happen and and uh, allows me to upload another video, I plan to. And if that happens, I'll see you the next time. Your old pal Papa Dale signing off for now. And I'm telling you, I will pray for you as soon as I turn this video off. I'm going to pray for you that you will be well and that you will be blessed. And that's two thumbs up for you. <laughs>